All right, guys, Good boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and it is a mess. It's a Freedom Shack, hashtag slash more shack. So anyway, uh, I've got on the display table right here in front of me a couple little items uh, to include the ARV Custom that we just built. This is the PCC Elite. That's what we've named this guy. And it is based on the ARV platform, this guy right here, the upper and lower receiver build set from Palmetto State Armory. And... Uh, you can still get these things, the bill set, for like $5.29. Pretty good deal considering you get a, they're forged, they're not milled, uh, cnc but you get a forged upper and lower receiver set that are matched and a bolt. The rest is up to you. And I tell you what, I, I found out about that builder set through my friend Pop's Quest. We're going to go down to Talladega and shoot the two gun nationals with that thing. And I tell you what, I think I've put together a really, really unique setup. Um, the cool thing about the ARV is it shares the commonality with the AKV, this little guy right here. If you remember, I've done a lot of cool things with this, uh, using the Scorpion mags. So uh, really cool little setup and you're able to do the extensions and they do have an available drum mag, which I'm having issues with right now, but we'll talk about that in another video. These guys right here run reliable. So it's really neat and uh, that you got the AKV, the ARV, and I wanted to do a comparison with this guy right here. This is the ARV. This is the factory version uh, from Palmetto State Army. This has the 16 inch barrel. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you in detail on the table right behind me. And uh, we'll talk about a lot of the things, what it has, what it's coming with. And in the upcoming weeks, we'll go ahead and take it out to the range and give it a go. Uh, the only thing that I will be changing out on this thing uh, <laughs> is the muzzle brake. The trigger system is uh, adequate. It's the EPT system. We'll talk about that later on. But in the box, you got the cable lock as well as another 33 round magazine. I believe these things hold, pretty sure of it. And a really cool PSA sticker and this thing full of bead stuff that my dogs like to break into and spread all over the house. So with that being said, let's go ahead. We'll turn it around. We'll put it on the review table behind me. And let's talk about all the details on this guy because I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, <laughs> I'm digging it. I really am. Lightweight. I don't even know the weight of it. I got to get the scales out to see. But, man, you want to talk about a cool little system? The EPT trigger, very smooth. Let's put it on the table and see what it's all about. Here we go. Stand by. All right, guys. So we're sitting here on the review table. And in front of me, I've actually got, this is the uh, PCC Elite. Now, here's the whole thing. I built this on the ARV platform. But here's the difference. This thing is stocked full of just about as much goodness as I possibly could give it to the tune of about $2,200. And I saved up and ate ramen noodles for months just in order to get this thing done. Uh, but you can achieve pretty much the same thing with this guy right here, which is, uh, I think, retailing right now for about $99.99. And in today's market, it is what it is, and you just got to accept that fact. But uh, one of the things we wanted to do, and I still have that guy right there on there. So let's go ahead and take that off. Ta -da. All right. Now, now we're feeling good. Okay. So what we got here, we have the ARV chambered in nine millimeter. It comes with a 16 inch chrome molly barrel. Uh, all in all, a really, really neat firearm. So what we're going to do, just like we do on all these firearms, is we're going to go from front to back. On this specific firearm, you've got just a regular old mag pull. Uh, in a competition level thing, this will do you fine. I kind of like the uh, MFT Mission First Tactical. Uh, th th that is one of the best options for any kind of competition level firearm. Uh, mag pull grip, EPT trigger. This is your mag release right here. And it's funny, I had to go over to 704 Tactical to figure out where the hell's the mag release. Because I couldn't find it at first. I was like, oh, there it is right there. Very nice release on this guy. Uh, you know what? Let's do this real quick. Yes, as a comparison. Hold on. Yeah, okay. That works. All right. These right here, these are the magazine extensions that you can buy from those guys. Okay, so over here on my computer, I have my Word document. I've got it opened up. Let's talk about the important things. Now, here's the whole thing. We're not going to scope the barrel out. don't really care. Uh, but what we will do eventually down the road is we'll take this thing out, shoot it, uh, see how it performs. I want to do a recoil test with the Lead Star uh, flash 
mitigator or muzzle brake comp to see how big a difference it is or how big a difference that thing actually makes. But we'll talk about this thing. You've got a 16 inch barrel. The gas system is direct blowback. And for the guys that are talking about direct blowback versus the uh, delayed roll system from the guys over at CMMG, I do have the Banshee and 45 ACP. We're gonna put a rare breed trigger on that thing and let it go, see how it works. I'm looking forward to it. The barrel profile, profile they said is an M4 profile. That is not, it's like a slim line profile. Uh, 4150 chrome molly steel, nitride finish. Uh, the threads on the end of it are one and uh, one half by 28 and a one to 10 twist rate. Uh, the barrel, exactly, let's talk about this. It has a really neat looking profile on the barrel extension. And we'll talk about this guy here in a minute. But what I want to show you guys, I hope that you can see that, the interior of the barrel right there. Uh, all it is is flat, but what you have here is a nice feed ramp that feeds up on it. It is held in place by these two set screws right here. One of the things that I would recommend is going ahead and checking that for tightness. All right, one of the things you have here is a 13 and a half inch lightweight M-lock handguard. You've got these sections up here on the top and on the sides. In my previous experience, uh, and let me go get the, uh, what do you call it, Kinetic Development Group, uh, uh, rail system because that is what I check to make sure these things are set to spec. I found on these top rails from PSA these aren't actually set up for an M-Lock standby. Alright so what I have here this is a little QD thing from the guys over there at Kinetic Development Group. I use these a lot especially like on tripods. They will hold a tripod on your uh, handguard. And what I, I can tell you is that I have a lot of experience working with Geisley and a bunch of other things. But this thing right here, if you'll see, fits perfect. There is no wiggle in it. Uh, would I put an optic on it? <sighs> maybe for CQB purposes, maybe, but probably not. Uh, but this guy will tie on to all the locations. One of the reasons why Geisley makes one of my favorite handguards. But what we like to do is check other handguards just to see if they are in spec and you can see this thing is having trouble getting in there yeah that looks like the handguard's just a little thick does that mean it won't work see right there that's still got a little wiggle room right there uh we'll go back here and pick this one up oops so it probably will work with just a regular M-Lock, but it's not going to work with this guy, which means these are uh, maybe a little bit out of spec, but not that bad. Overall, I will tell you this, the uh, this thing is just, it's clean. That's one of the things I like about it. Big old barrel nut in there. Uh, let's see how tight these things are. And if I'm going to make a suggestion, guys. I don't care who manufactures the rifle, but you need to go uh, behind the manufacturer and check everything to make sure that these little things right here are tight. What do you call these things? Allen wrench screws. So let's see here. Um, go ahead. All right, that's pretty tight. That one's pretty tight. They're acceptable. Okay, and another thing that's one of my pet peeves, and if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know that I am a big stickler for a straight level edge from here all the way out here. So let's go ahead and grab our straight edge and see how that works out. That is important for me, especially on a long rifle. If you've got a front sight post and a rear sight post, you need to make sure that these things are level. I have actually seen these things where they're pitched up almost a quarter inch out of level with this guy right here. I'll take this little straight edge and what I do is I am seeing if there's any space right here. And on this thing, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but not that much, which is acceptable to me, I think. All right, other than that, that's it. You got a cutie point right here and here, here and here. Uh, pick rail up in the front and the rear venting that looks really neat doesn't it? Uh, and that's it. Okay, so the charging handle, handle is just a regular old mil spec charging handle, nothing to see there. Let's take a look at the uh, bolt. Now, you don't really have to worry about the staking on a direct blowback because there's no gas that goes through here, but we do want to check to make sure that these are tightened 
and yeah, they are. These are good and tight. They're not budging. That's perfect. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and pull the firing pin out. Now these are spring loaded. This is one of the reasons why bump firing a nine millimeter can do bad things to you and your loved ones. <laughs> Cotter pin, spring loaded. There we go. Firing pin looks really nice. No big deal. And again, spring loaded right there. Uh, it does have an AR15 style extractor right there. And I could remove that, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, not bad. Let's talk about what kind of steel this thing's made out of. The bolt is made out of 8620 steel. Now, here's the thing, the ARV bolt is different from a regular old uh, 9mm bolt, so you're not going to be able to interchange these things. It's kind of nice that I've got a spare one in the event that one goes down. I don't have to worry about that. The cool thing about this guy, though, is it does have a last round hold open, just right there. And that is one of the best parts. Now, the, re the way that works is you can see there's a little tab right there. And what that does is it pushes it up and it holds that bolt back. See that little tab right there? Very nice. Now, this particular lower comes with their EPT, uh, Enhanced Polish Trigger. It's okay. I mean, I'd give it, out of a mil-spec trigger that's got some nickel boron on it, I'd probably give it about an 8, maybe a 7.5. Not quite. Oh, look, it even has 7 right there, so let's just make it a 7. It doesn't have ambidextrous controls like the ARV Elite, which is basically the, uh, what do you guys call those? Strike Industries lower parts kits, which I actually love. And let's see here. 7075 aluminum on the buffer tube. No big deal. Let's see what kind of weight they're running in this thing. That looks like, I can't tell what size or how wet the weight is on the buffer. It doesn't give me any information on that, but we'll test that out later on. I'll, I'll put it out during the range review. Um, overall, the build quality on this thing is badass. Let's see if I missed any other information that you may need. Nope. Hard coat anodized, single stage enhanced polish trigger, grip is mag pull. This is a five, oops, five, uh, what do you call this thing? Five notched. Well, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six PSA, six. Okay. The magazine is the uh, PSA AKV U9 35 round. Oh, yeah, baby. We got 35 rounds. All right, let's see. What else we got down here? Nothing much. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as performance, I can't wait to get this thing out. And like I said, one of the things we are going to do, we're going to put this guy up against the uh, ARV or the PCC Elite and the GMR from uh, the guys over there at JP that was sent to the channel by my good friend Ethan Manning. And we're going to see how a factory edition version of this thing will run alongside the big dogs. And I tell you what. PSA, lead star. If you guys are serious into the pistol caliber carbine thing, they got that lead star helium, which is a bad mofo. I will tell you that right now. Uh, I was, that ain't, that ain't right. Hold on. I was seriously impressed with that thing. Um, it's got to be the lightest. And I'm talking to the guys. I understand that with the, uh, what do you call that? Oh my gosh, the Blitzkrieg, um, the Blitzkrieg uh, thingy uh, buffer. Now, I can't use the HD with a 5 inch, but you want to use the HD with this with an AR 10 uh, spring and a short stroke spacer, which I have the ability to put that in the ARV or the PCC Elite. We'll go from there. Anyway, guys, you get the gist. This thing is really cool. I'm amazed. And here's the cool thing. If you don't have a pistol caliber carbine, uh, one of the ways or the reasons I have it is so I can test out red dots without having to go out and blast through some 5.56 ammo. It's a lot of fun to shoot. And 
Uh, again, like I said, I get a red dot in. Somebody wants me to test it out. I can put it on the PCC, take it out, shoot it real fast, and see how it works. I'm not worried about taking a, a red dot out the distance because what do you do? Is a holdover is a holdover, whatever. So anyway, that's it. Um, this is my tabletop of uh, the ARV front to back. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Let me show you guys this. Last round hold up. There it is. You can release it with this little thing right here. Boom. And you're done. You're in business. That's cool. And it's nice to have several of these things laying around that take the same magazines. With that being said, guys, uh, we always do them like this. God bless, God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform. 24-7 for our freedom, because freedom is not free. And talk about the men and women in uniform who will support our Constitution and enforce it like it's supposed to be and put the government in place where they are supposed to be. Because I think the government, well, I'm pretty sure they've lost their direction on what their actual jobs is supposed to be. But with that being said, I'm out of here. Y'all be good. Woohoo! That was a good tabletop. All right.